So I've been seeing a lot of people recently saying combo decks don't take skill. They don't take skill. You're just a brainless Yu-Gi-Oh player if you play a combo deck. And um, I don't agree, Sugar Boo Bear. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain over that subscribe button so we can climb even higher, the 1100 ladder. Hope y'all are having a fantastic day. I am super tired. I'm trying to get used to my new full-time jobs. Work schedule, I was 9 to 5, now they're moving me 8 to 4, and I'm just exhausted, ladies and gentlemen. I, I could go to sleep right now, and it's only 8.34 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, I want to talk about a subject that I've seen crop up as of late. And I've seen it in my comment section, I've seen it on Reddit and things like that. And it's Yu-Gi-Oh players saying that combo decks don't take skill. And inherently, I disagree with that because inherently combo decks, the way that they're designed, do take a, an, a, a certain amount of skill to play, especially when you're first learning the deck. You know, we've seen terms called, uh, well, rather we've seen terms used known uh, as they're called, if I could talk today, big brain plays, where, you know, someone's really using their brain or thinking outside of the box to make a skillful or technical play. Or like how we saw Team Samurai playing Pendulum Magicians with a Gate Guardian engine. Some people were, make, were saying in the comment section of that video, that's way too big brain for me. I wouldn't be able to figure this out. And we've seen like big brain decks like that in Yu-Gi-Oh for years, I would argue. You know, I recently saw, I think it was out of the Houston Regional, a 60 card, no, it wasn't Houston, it was Wisconsin or something. It was a 60 card Sprite deck where you had the Sprite engine, but then you had like 12 hand traps or something. You had the adventure package. Then you had uh, tuner monsters like Plague Spreader Zombie. You had things like uh, Hoppier Squadron or whatever the tuner is. And they were all like level two tuners and things that the Sprite engine could facilitate. So you could use those tuners to make like gigantic Sprite, or you can make like Sprite Sprint to dump like a Plague, top deck to get something out to make a Synchro. And it was very, at least in my opinion, big brain. You needed a lot of skill to pilot that deck. You know, people say that combo decks are brain dead, but yet I would argue that if you're playing something that's not combo or that requires a lot of technical skill, you, couldn't you make the argument that that is just a brain dead deck? Because, I mean, if you're playing Sprite, like, yeah, I get it. People want to dunk on Sprite because it is a tier one deck. You know, the plays aren't all that complicated. You basically just summon a nimble beaver, get out another one and like make a gigantic and play a starter and go from there, assuming that you don't get hand trapped with like Ash or something. But when you're initially learning a combo deck, especially, there is skill involved in knowing how to make those plays and knowing which correct line to go down in the skill tree of a combo deck. You know, when I was playing 60 card branded Eldritch at that Book of Return regional like nine months ago, you know, yeah, the deck wasn't very skillful, but it did require technical play. You know, people would, would joke with me and say, you know, is there really any skill in setting a trap card or setting back row or setting a floodgate, whatever? And no, inherently, there's no skill involved in that concept. But the fact that I was playing a deck that I was just pantsing people with because they didn't know what I was playing, they would see Pot of Extravagance and they would think I'm playing something rogue and they would ash me. And then a branded fusion comes down on the table. And in reality, they technically didn't misplay. But because I'm playing a really teched out branded Eldritch 60 card deck that was playing a bunch of Floodgates and a Mystic Mine engine at the time, it turned out for them to be a misplay because they wasted their Ash Blossom on the Pot of Extravagance and not the Branded Fusion. Now, is that inherently skillful on my part? Or is it that I'm just playing a brain dead Branded deck with an Eldritch and Mystic Mind Engine? No, it's the fact that the player who originally made the deck, which was like in Europe, was skillful enough to create the deck. And then I just happened to be skillful enough to learn the deck within a couple of months before the regional and get my invite because of it. But if I didn't go against a meta deck with that deck, I lost. Like if you go back and look at that deck profile, I lost to a fucking 60 card Dark Magician Dogmatica deck. And the deck was dog shit. Like <laughs> there was no reason why I should have lost to that deck. And if I was playing Branded or 
whatever the other meta decks were at the time, Flunder, like I would have tapped his ass. Like there was no doubt in my mind about that. But because I was playing a rogue deck like Branded Eldritch that literally in the original deck profile, the guy said, if you play against rogue, you're probably going to lose. And the mirror match is 50-50. The mirror match obviously being the Eldritch and uh, the pure Eldritch deck matchup. Like, yeah, we were on the struggle bus, but if I played against Brandon, I was whooping your ass. Play against Flunder, whooping your ass. Like, all of the meta decks in the room, I had an inherently good advantage against. Is that skill, or did I just get lucky? No, I was skillful enough to know how best to play my cards because the deck required technical play. You know, tier element, even though it was a tier zero dog shit format when it was just at full power... The deck did inherently require some skill, especially if you went to those higher level events like a YCS or Nationals, because you were going to need to understand the mirror match to a T if you wanted any chance of being able to beat that mirror match. You know, yeah, people say, oh, if you break the tier element board, they can just rebuild the board on your turn. And even though that is true, they have to be able to rebuild their board correctly so that they're able to stop whatever plays that you're able to make, whether you're playing Sprite or what have you. They have to know how to most efficiently play through or play around the buy steal monsters at the time. So are, is it just a brain deck deck because, and it doesn't take any skill because it's a combo tier zero deck? Or when you put in that mindset, is it a skillful deck? And I consider combo decks majority of the time to at least require some skill. You know, I don't think anyone can watch this video or sit across a Mystic Mind player and say, yes, this deck requires skill because it's not fucking meta. I don't understand that because Mystic Mind was literally the most skillless deck in the fucking game. You can't tell me that activating a Dark Ruler and then activating a Mystic Mind with a Field Bearer required skill because that required no thinking at all. I can prove that shit because my dad didn't know what the fuck he was doing and he ended up going like, what, five wins, three law, uh, no, five wins, three draws, and like one loss or something like that when a Shizu tier had just came out at full power and he bubbled out from getting his invite and he had no clue what he was doing and he punted away two games because he didn't understand the end of match procedures. Like, hello? No, the deck takes no skill and that should prove it. When my dad doesn't know what is going on in the room, he's just happy to be there and he's tapping ass and he doesn't know what's going on. Like the deck was so dog shit and it was so skillless. You know, if you look at something like, uh, even like Dragon Rulers, I would argue took some skill because again, it was a tier zero deck and you needed to know how to beat the mirror match. You needed to know how best to combat spell books. When you're playing a combo deck, you have to be more uh, concerned about hand traps like Nibiru. You know, you're going through all your summons, you're making all your plays, but you need to keep that that big old rock is about to come whoop your ass if you hit summon number five and you don't have and you don't have some sort of negate. So I don't understand why it is that people are trying to make this argument that combo decks don't take any skill. Because like when you're first learning the deck. Yes, they take skill. And sometimes with these combo decks, one mistake can lead you to losing. Like, yeah, there's always going to be those idiots who are on unofficial simulators like Dueling Nexus, EDO Pro, what have you, where if they make one misplay, then they just rage quit. But at the same time, like if they're learning the deck, it's understandable because they're not going to just sit there across from you and play out a game that they know that they're going to fucking lose. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Why are they going to waste their life doing that when they can just take the loss, they realize that they misplayed, and then they can go off and test against someone else or test solo, just goldfishing hands, and they can be a better player overall because of it. And that's the other thing too, is that if you do not actively try to play combo decks and learn what the other meta decks in the room can do, you are inherently uh, making, I don't want to say making yourself a bad player, but you are rejecting yourself. I can't think of the right term, but like you are rejecting yourself from the the chance and the ability to not only get better at the game, but learn more about the game itself. You know, if you've never played Cash Tira or Sprite before, or even Flunder before, I encourage you to pick up those decks. And even if you don't want to play against someone else, go into like solo mode on Dueling Book or EDO Pro and start goldfishing hands and see how the deck functions. Because not only do you learn how the deck functions and you become better as a player, but you learn the choke points in these combo no skill decks 
so that when you are playing your rogue deck, whether it's fucking Aromage or Trap Trick, Cyber Dragon, what the fuck ever, pure Eldritch, like, you know where to choke out these decks to where you have a chance. You know, like, if someone is playing against you with Sprite, and they have Sprite Starter and, like, a Nimble Beaver in their hand, are, and they and they do one of those plays. Are you going to ash the beaver or ash the starter? Or are you going to take door number three and you're going to ash the shit out of their gigantic sprite? You're going to ash the gigantic sprite. If you answer that correctly, then congratulations. Because why are you going to waste an ash on one of those cards when they just haven't extended a playthrough and still make the board and still whoop your ass? So... In that instance, it's better to either Ash the Sprint or the Gigantic, because depending on how they open, then they're kind of screwed, especially if they don't have Griffin Rider with the negate. So I feel that there's a lot to learn from playing combo decks. I don't think that they should just be called Brain Dead. If you know the deck like the back of your hand, yeah, sure, I guess then the, the player that's piloting it is just being Brain Dead because they can just turn their brain off and just do their combo. But even then, I feel like unless they know you don't have a hand trap or a Nibiru, then they still have to kind of pucker up their butthole a little bit and make sure that they don't get hit by that. Because like with Kashira, they get hit by Nibiru, they just lose the whole ball game. So guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. This has been on my mind for a few days. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.